Good evening. Welcome to the League of Women Voters of Ventura County's Candidates Forum. This one is on the Ventura City Council candidates running in District 1. This is the first year that the Cindy Council in Ventura has been separated by districts. Tonight we have four candidates who are running for District 1. I'm David Marin, your host and moderator, and I am a member of the League of Women Voters. What we're going to do tonight is each candidate will have one minute for their opening statements. We're going to begin with Sophia and work our way down. At the end of the evening, we'll reverse that and come back. The way this process works is we want to hear your questions. So we have volunteers with index cards and pencils. Just hold up your hand at any time. They'll come around and bring you a card and write out your question as legibly as possible. That helps me. But we'll try to get as many of your questions in as possible. And you can raise your hand as many times as you want if you have more questions. We have a person over in the middle who has a card. So with that, we're going to start with our opening statements. Doris, we have one in the middle. Okay, we're going to begin. Our first candidate is Sofia Rubel Cava. Thank you. Muy buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Sofia Rubel Cava y estoy aquí para obtener su apoyo y su voto. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sofia Rubel Cava and I am here because I want to gain your support and your vote. So I was born and raised here on the West Side. And so I'm a lifelong member of this community, and that is the reason why I decided to run for city council, because I feel that I can bring a unique perspective that has actually never been part of city council. So I feel that by bringing in new ideas, new voices, and lifelong residents, we can actually get things done on city council. So my experience here on the West Side has been as a child, as a teenager, as a young working professional, and I really want to represent the whole community. And that's why I've been endorsed by the Ventura County Democratic Party, the Democratic Club of Ventura, the Women's Political Council, Thank SEIU you. 721, among others. Thank you. Our next candidate is Marco Cuevas. Uh, hello, everyone. Like Sofia, I have a similar background and reason for running. Um, I am a lifelong uh, Venturan resident, uh, lived in the same house for all 20 years of my life, just a couple blocks from here. Uh, I've gone to school here, uh, ate, ate at restaurants here, just uh, really like the community vibe that I get here. I'm currently a student at Cal State University, Channel Islands. Um, I am running to offer a fresh perspective. I feel that I can bring critical thinking to the council and question things that maybe aren't being questioned anymore. Maybe they're going through the motions. Um, maybe we need to look at reallocating some things or resources in our city. And so my mission is very simple. I want to find solutions for the problems that have been facing our district, our city for years, decades. I, I hear it all the time. I just want to find solutions for that. And I would really appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Our next candidate is Kevin Clarisi. Yeah. My name is Kevin Clarisi, and I'm a proud working parent, community volunteer, and West Side homeowner. We're invested here, and we plan to stay. I've dedicated my whole career to public service, first as a journalist in the last seven years as the director of the nonprofit Downtown Improvement District. This means I get to work every day with over 250 small business owners, diverse mom and pops, residents, population. And during my time there, I've forged a reputation as someone who listens, who works with people, who helps them navigate City Hall, cut through red tape, and most importantly, get things done. I work every day on the front lines of our homeless and our housing challenges. We're in unique times, and I think my years of experience give me a unique perspective. We don't have a city manager. We're still recovering from the Thomas fire. I am ready to work from you from day one. I'm the only candidate who lives and works in District 1 every day, and I'm going to be here from you. Your voice matters. Let's do this to together. Stop you there, Kevin. Thank you. Irene, we'll hear from you one minute. Good evening. My name is Irene Henry, and I'm the best candidate for Ventura City Council because I love Ventura. 
I have been living on the west side for the last 30 years. This is where we've raised our family. My business was downtown, so I'm familiar with our residential area as well as the business district. I will be your voice at City Hall. I've also been the past president of the Ventura Downtown Rotary and the president for the Boys and Girls Club. As well as running my own business, I bring these skill sets to City Hall to make your voice heard. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to start with you, Marco, on the first question. So let's start off by talking about water. Marco, we're in a stage three drought. Lake Casitas is at historic lows. So do you have any specific plans for what you would do to help with the water situation? And would you be open to desalination and selling that to communities inland? Absolutely. One of my main issues that I'm focusing on is fixing our infrastructure, and one of that is finding a solution for our water crisis. I have uh, looked into maybe hooking up to the state water um, system as a solution, desalination also as a solution. There are many different solutions that we can come up with to actually solve our water crisis short of just conserving water, so our city should look more into those types of things. Thank you. Kevin, same question to you about water. The, um the shortage at Lake Casitas, what would you do to uh, help secure water security? And also, of course, that means new development needs water. And your thoughts on desalination? Yeah, great question. There's probably no issue that's more pressing right now than water and our water supply. Um, my feelings are straightforward. I support the current council policy that we're working very fast and hard to work to the state water system. Um, that's an important first step, but that is not going to be the only step because that it's an unreliable system. Um, I also feel strongly um, the question is about desalination. Currently, the cost is prohibitive, in my opinion, to go down, down that route. But I do favor purification. There's an ongoing effort now to reuse our treated effluent and create a treated purification system to use that. I believe that our effluent is a resource. This is something that we can control. This is something that we can manage. And this is something that we can reuse. I think both of those efforts are critical. Um, but I do believe that we must address our water issue. Even if it becomes so bare, we might have to look at a, a moratorium on growth. Thank you. Sophia, we're jumping around, so you're next. Same question to you about uh, the drought. What would you do to deal with it? Your thoughts on uh, limiting development and also desalination? Yeah, definitely water is a big concern for many people. So one of the things that I think we can do right off the bat is about 50% of our water is used for landscape use. So we can work on that and reduce that amount of water that is used for that purpose. We can also talk about gray water systems, really implementing gray water systems in homes, and that way we reduce the amount of water that we use. Another thing I think that we can look into is definitely using recycled water. That would definitely help us with our water crisis. And there's other options on the table, of course, like the, the, the state water. So we need to really look carefully at that. The desalination, I think it's too expensive. And I, I don't think it would be a good way for us to go. It's way too expensive to implement that. What were some of the other things? Uh, development. Development, yeah, development. So there's an issue with development right now. So We'll have to save that for later. So, Okay, Irene, we'll wrap up with you. Your thoughts about the water shortage, dealing with new development, uh, desalination, is that even something we could sell to other communities? I would first look at options that we do have in place. The city of Ventura over 40 years ago started paying a state water fee. We have approximately 5,000 acres of water. Now we need to work with other folks and implement the infrastructure that's already in place to bring that water that we own to the reservoirs that the city of Ventura actually has to house that water before we look at a more costly option such as desalination. Another Another suggestion is to look at our water department. Recently, we hired on several new folks to the water department, but I would suggest that we also look to hire one who specifically is a water engineer, and that's their area of expertise, and bring him or her on to that team as we're hiring these new folks. And in relationship to balanced growth, we have to continue to look to provide affordable housing and have a vibrant business community. So we need to address the water, but we also need need to take care of our citizens for those components. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, we'll start the next question with you. So for District 1 to advance its developmental priorities, 
What key departments and roles and civic bodies do you think need to be engaged? What are your thoughts about development specifically in District 1? Great question. That's kind of a two-part question because he asked about what are the key parts that need to be engaged. So I'm going to start with there. I think one of the benefits and one of the things that I'm honored about trying to run for District 1 is we actually have some really um, powerful community groups already doing work on the ground. I'm proud of our West Side Community Council, our WCDC and the great work they're doing, the, the West Side Action Group. Um, it, part of it is a good council member needs to be able to be here to listen and empower those groups to do what they're doing. So it's not just about me deciding what's best for them, it's about being able to listen to them. Question, the second part of that was about development and about growth. And on the West End, this is probably the most pressing issue. Um, we frankly, have a limited amount of space and we have a limited amount of water. So the key is that we're going to have to reutilize our existing spaces the best we can. We need to rehab older spaces and we need to focus our growth along our corridors and make sure that protects our current culture and our heritage that we have now. Thank you. Sophia, we'll let you go next. Same question. Your uh, thoughts about developmental priorities here in District 1 and what others would you engage such as civic bodies or the within departments within the city? Yeah, so definitely one of the issues with development here on the west side is the lack of affordable housing. So I think that any project that we approve definitely has to include affordable housing. So that's one of the big issues with development. Another thing is I feel like we need to, yes, definitely bring in the current community groups that are here, but also involving the residents who are gonna be pe the people that are living in those developments and also are gonna be the neighbors of those developments. So we need to definitely bring in all voices to the table. And I feel like we also can provide language access for people who maybe do not speak the language so that they can also be part of those conversations because all residents will be affected by the number and the amount of developments that are offered here. Thank you. Irene, we'll go with you next. What are your thoughts about development in District 1? We're looking at, as we have already mentioned, priorities for affordable housing. But something that the West Side has is they're zoned M1, which is light commercial, and M2, which is medium commercial. And we've had a lot of businesses that have left the avenue, and we have to be more inviting to bring businesses back and make the avenue more of a viable, viable business community. Because when we have businesses down there, that brings businesses to the restaurants down there. And, and it encourages people to come and live live on the west side. So we also have to work with both sections, both the residential get their input as well as the businesses. And then in regards to where we should look, we should work with the agencies. We have a lot of infill that we need to work with as where to balance and provide housing where there's infill first to be filled and then where we would move further, further from there. Thank you. Thank you. Marco, we'll wrap up with you. Your thoughts about development in, in District 1. Like my fellow candidates, I agree we need to listen to the people. We also need to understand the importance of business for economic growth in our community. As far as affordable housing goes, uh, as an economic student, I understand that um, more supply brings down prices, or at least it should. Uh, we need to look at infill development, uh, just em also uh, empty, empty land. I pass by up and down the avenue, and I see these spaces that, these lots that are just never used, and I'm like, wouldn't it be great if we had something there so that we could actually use it so it wouldn't just be a wasted piece of land? And also, I've heard this uh, a term coined recently called smart growth. I believe that's important when looking at the economic growth and the housing availability in our district. We need to make sure that we have um, the support for traffic because we don't want to become another LA with all the traffic and nobody wants to take an hour just to get from one part of Ventura to the other. And we also need to make sure that our infrastructure is set um, with water and other aspects. Thank you. Thank you. Irene, we're going to start our next question. You'll be first this time. There's several questions here about traffic on the west side. I don't think that's a surprise to any of you. But can you tell us about your position about traffic and reducing grid -like, gridlock? Do you have solutions? And also evacuation under the during the Thomas fire, it took an hour. It took hours for people to evacuate. So, your thoughts on reducing gridlock on the west side and also evacuation? 
In reducing gridlock on the west side, one of the things I would look to is see what studies have already been put out and where the studies that the city has already suggested where to address it. Right now with the additional housings that units that we have over on the west side, even getting on to the 33 off of Stanley is often a treacherous point in 1.1 person's life from the traffic that comes down from Ojai. But also not just traffic, but more customer um, and safety areas for cyclists. Because there, you can go from Seneca all the way to De Anza on Cameron, and there aren't any sidewalks. And we should have, think about our students that are walking to and from school without a safe way to get there, whether it's bicycling, because there aren't any sidewalks present. And in regards to evacuation, we should, be, we should be putting out all that information both in English and Spanish, not just on our websites, but on our printed materials so people know how to get out of the area safely. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, same question to you. As far as your solutions for traffic on the west side and also dealing with evacuation under emergencies. Yeah, great question. Uh, I'll be straightforward. I think the number one priority has got to be the 33 to the Stanley Avenue interchange. That is that is a critical corridor, and we're having real challenges with it right now. And I think you need a leader who's going to step in and make that a top priority. Um, our Public Works Department is already looking at it. It's an unfunded project. So something along that magnitude is going to take someone who can work with Caltrans, work with the different agencies, work with our council to make it a higher priority and something that we could try to fund. The avenue is our lifeblood in Olive Street. And so our making sure the avenue functions properly, I definitely support um, making it pedestrian and bicycle friendly. Um, and I think we need to secure that. And, and any improvements need to make sure that, that stays in place. Um, the second part was about communicating in a natural disaster. And we learned some hard lessons after the Thomas fire. I 100% agree. We absolutely must have communication in English and Spanish. That is, a, that is a minimum. But I think we need to also have leaders who check in regularly with their community to make sure they know what, what the city's doing and make sure they know Thank what the you, city's are working on. We, the city doesn't there. do enough. I have to stop you there, Kevin. OK, Marco, you're up next. Uh, your thoughts about traffic, gridlock, solutions, and evacuations. Yeah, I don't know what else can be said. I think we all have some great ideas here. Um, I've always thought going on to the 33 that um, something should be done about expanding that and yeah, working with Caltrans and getting in touch with the state so the city and the state can really work to solve traffic um, going on the 33. As far as evacuations go, I would like to work with the police and fire department to implement new safety strategies because as someone who was coming from just a couple of blocks away here on Seneca, it took over an hour to evacuate because of the gridlock. I think we can find better ways to just get traffic flowing out of the city. Because by the time I got to the 33, it was it was just there was just no cars. So it was like, what's what's with the holdup? So I think we can work together to implement new evacuation strategies. Thank you, Sophia. We'll wrap up with you. Your uh, solutions to gridlock on the west side and the emergencies. Yeah, so gridlock and traffic, definitely an issue. I know that the 33, the on-ramp for Stanley is definitely a big issue. And I know that SUSE has been working on that for a long time. And there's some um, securing the funding there. So there's real possibilities for us to be able to do a lot with that. And so definitely traffic. I think a really good way of improving the flow of traffic is providing more alternatives. For example, better public transportation, better bus systems, and also being more bicycle friendly. I'm a cyclist myself, so I know that if we improve bicycle, the bicycle trail, the bicycle lanes, more people will be more likely to ride their bicycle. That's another thing. And then the issue with evacuation, yes, we did see a big issue with that. I think we should have, have like block captains who are trained to di direct traffic when that happens, and that way traffic flows better. And also having like buses or vans that can pick people up, people who don't have transportation. Okay, thank you. Sophia, we'll go ahead and start the next question with you. And this is one that's talked about all over the city of Ventura, in fact, parts of the uh, entire county. But the homelessness has been a problem. It's been a concern for many. What, is, uh, what are your positions about um, solving the homelessness situation? Do you support the current council's efforts? Do you have other ideas? And do you think that all the Measure O money should go towards shelters? Yeah, so homelessness, we see a lot of that here on the west side. And I think we need to take a humane approach because these are residents of our city as well. 
a lot of people think that most of these people come from outside, and that is actually not true. Most of homeless people in Ventura are actually from Ventura County. And I definitely support the year-round shelter, but I think that's a really good start, but we need more of that type of, of service. So I know that there's a lot of good work going on with different agencies and organizations and churches around town. So definitely I would support that. But I also think that we need to look at prevention. I actually see people on the street that I went to high school with and they're now homeless. So I think like, where did we go wrong? What kinds of services did we miss in high school? You know, or during that time, which I think is a really critical time for people when they become homeless it might happen right around their teen years or early 20s. Thank you. So Marco, same question to you. What, do you support the current council's position on providing care for the homeless? And what are your solutions for the homeless? Do you support using the money from Measure O for shelters? I believe the council is working in the right direction. This is one of my top priorities, if not my top priority, is trying to find a real solution for homelessness. And I believe the council has come up with an answer, but not quite a solution. We need to look at finding a solution that works for everyone. Uh, we need to understand the difference between people who might just temporarily be out of work or those who are mentally unstable and may not be able to go back into work and see what kind of um, housing we can provide for them. Um, I was also looking at some numbers earlier as far as the difference between Ventura's homeless population and Oxnard's homeless population. So year over year for 2017 to 2018, Oxnard's homeless population went down while Ventura's went up. And by pure numbers, Ventura has more um, homeless people compared to Oxnard, uh, and they have a higher population than us. So the rate of homelessness in Ventura is something that I've seen as a problem and something that I've grown up with going, having gone to Holy Cross School right down by the mission, seeing homeless at Mission Plaza and yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Kevin, same question to you on the homeless situation. Yeah, this is great. This is something I work with every single day and I'm deeply passionate about. Um, this is a complex issue that I could go on for 20 minutes, but I will be as succinct as I can. The solution is gonna require collaboration and cooperation and a collaborative approach um, I absolutely support the city council's current policy because I'm part of the group that's been pushing for this. We need a year-round facility, but it's not the solution, the only solution. It's one element to get people stabilized. We also need additional permanent supportive housing so that people, when they're ready to transition from that, have options to come out of that. But we also need collaboration every day between our police force, our firefighters, our social services network, our county agencies that actually provide the treatment facilities that many people need. Um, I'm, I'm deeply involved and care about this, and this is something that I've, I feel like I can take a leadership position on if elected and want to work on this from day one. Thank you. And Irene will wrap up with you on the same question. Thank you. I actually agree with everything Kevin said. I would add to that that when you ask like where we've been with city council in the past, we basically have been supplying band-aid effects to take care of the homeless issue. And regrettably, someone had to die before we actually put in more of a permanent solution with an all year round shelter instead of a shelter that's just open during the winter months, opens at 6 p.m. and then closes at 6 a.m. So moving forward with all these agencies that are working more cooperatively together to put this year round shelter into effect over on Knoll Drive, it won't happen, I guess, for about a year. That's the first step in the right direction for permanent solutions moving forward with the nonprofits. And the Social Services Task Force, which I was involved with several years ago, has also been a moving force to look not for Band-Aid results, but for long-term along the same lines of our facility that will be on Knoll Drive. Thank you. Marco, you're up next on this uh, question. We've been getting very specific in the weeds on some of these, so I want to give all of you a chance to go a little more high level. Tell us about your vision for the district, one or two of your top priorities if you're elected. So Marco, we'll start with you. So as I mentioned, um, two of my top priorities were finding a solution for homelessness and also fixing our infrastructure. So a couple of my other um, top priorities are enhancing public safety. Um, to go further into that, um, I've seen I've heard that uh, we have the same staffing levels for firefighters as we did 20, 30 years ago, and well, our population's grown, so maybe it's time we look into um, having more firefighters or how our fire current firefighters and police officers are being utilized for our public safety so that we can keep 
um, crime and fire uh, low in this uh, in our district in our city. Um, my other uh, issue is uh, fiscal responsibility. So. I see that there's a couple things that maybe I hear about that the city maybe shouldn't have spent money on something. For example, the state water system, we pay I think 1.2 or 1.5 million dollars a year, but we don't even use the state water system. So maybe our money, it would be good to invest in it and actually Thank use you, Marco. It. Irene, uh, let's hear from you. Tell us about your vision for District 1, some of your top priorities for District 1. I act for District 1, because this is our first district, I would look to work and connect our west side with downtown. I, right now there's a free shuttle and it stops at Mission Park, but why can't we have that free shuttle wrap around and come down the avenue and stop at Bell Arts or Django's and pick up children and pick up families and bring them downtown to shop or bring them down to the beach. That's a district one, that's connecting our community. But we're also districts, but we also have to remember we have the connectivity between all the rest. A really big one, and I was recently, as well as Kevin at the Main Street, how to revitalize Main Street, but think about capping over the freeway, covering the freeway, and connecting our downtown back to the beach. Wouldn't we like to see that? Thank you. Thank you. And let's see, we'll go to Sophia next for your vision, your ideas, uh, top two priorities for District 1. My vision for District 1 is that we in District 1 have the same quality of life than other neighborhoods in the city because our neighborhood has been neglected for a long time. So I think now is a really good opportunity to have representation on city council so that we have an equal opportunity to quality of life here in District 1. And a couple of my priorities would be definitely improving access. And that's with regards to language access, to have information in, a langu in, in the language that people can understand, to all city information. Another thing, access to social and community services. I would like to see the same amount of services here on the west side as are offered throughout the city. Uh, one of the other things that I really want to see is a pool on the west side. As many of you know, we do not have access to a pool. The closest public pool is over in Kimball. So that's way too far. So definitely a pool here on the west side. Thank you. Kevin, we'll wrap up with you on your vision, your priorities for District 1. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I've been so fortunate in the last several weeks to be able to knock on dozens of doors and I've talked to many of, I think some people in this room and it's reinforced my belief and what I hear from from the community is that neighborhood safety is my my top priority my family my beautiful young daughter is right here in the front row and we want to be able to go to the grocery store without feeling like we're going to be panhandled when we walk in and walk out this is something that we need to address um, I also feel that what I hear from residents is that we have a beautiful character and charm. We are proud to be Westsiders. We are proud to be invested here. So I think one of my priorities is making sure that we maintain our character. Growth needs to happen to be able to pay our bills and to provide clean water, but we can do it in a way that protects our charm and protects our neighborhoods. I also think that we have to be able to have good circulation, traffic circulation. That was touched on earlier. That 33, we've got to fix that and that off-ramp. Um, and above all, I'm running because city council, you need four have, votes. I have to stop you. Sorry. Okay. okay. Uh, but Kevin, you get to go first this time. So how's that? So we have several questions about the environment. I'm going to try to wrap these together. So uh, tell us or tell the um, audience as far as your values about environmental and social justice, how that might influence you, and specifically your views about the hillside here uh, in, on the west area and also the river, the Ventura River Parkway. Is that something you would support being part of the National Recreation Trail System? Yeah, great question. In fact, um, I'm going to start with the Ventura um, River Parkway. Uh, I've been fortunate to be part of the Friends of the River for many years. This is a project that I've been personally dedicated to for a long time. I, I believe in and I support the Ventura Land Trust, uh, and I think they deserve our applause and our support for what they've been able to do down in the Ventura River. Absolutely, as a council member, I want to see more attention and more resources to that, including, I think, greater connections um, further up the avenue of how we can get into the river going into the future. Um, 
Uh, hillsides, you know, this is a complex issue, um, and we don't have enough time to talk about it now, but absolutely I believe that we need to protect our residents um, from any potential landslides that could happen there. That's something that people have talked to me about. Um, the environment is so important to all of us. Our public parks are so important to all of us. Spaces for our kids to play is so important to all of us, and that, that is a core priority of mine. Thank you. Sophia, you're up next, so we're wrapping in environmental, uh, your thoughts about the environment, social justice, and your decision making. The Hillsides Ventura River Parkway is part of the National Recreation Trail. So the environment, I think it is, I don't know if you, uh, a lot of you know this, but here on the west side we have the highest rate of pollution than any other neighborhood in the whole city, and I don't think that's a coincidence. I think it's due to social injustice. So definitely addressing the pollution rate and the environmental issues that we face here on the west side is a top priority for me because obviously a lot of the issues that we see with health-related problems are due to that. Asthma, for example, is due to the high rate of pollution that we have here on the west side. So I would definitely support preserving and taking care of the river and all of our other natural resources here on the west side. And the hillside is definitely a big issue that I feel we are actually kind of late to the game. We need to be working on that because it's a big concern. And as we saw with the fires and the mudslides in Montecito, that can happen at any moment. So we need to get working on that. Thank you. And uh, we'll go to Irene next, your thoughts. We're pretty fortunate on the west side because we have diversity both with people but with our environment. We have the hillsides and we have a river and we have the river. So these are areas that are open green spaces that we should look to protect as we move forward. We also have a commitment to do housing for our folks. So we have to find a balance and make sure we protect our environment while we still supply housing for people. And then the comment too in regards to the hillside and the potential possibility of it collapsing. It's been a who's on first, what's on second. Who owns that hillside? Who's going to be responsible to prevent it from becoming another La Conchita? And that's why you need a strong voice at City Council that's going to get answers and results, not, bef not after the catastrophe, but before. Thank you. Marco, we'll wrap up this question with you. Yeah, the environment is a very important issue to me. I believe uh, environment, community, public safety, they all go together and if you bring down pollution in the air like sometimes I breathe over by my house because factories emitting this pollution and things like that um, we need to look at public safety public health as a priority as far as the hillsides um, I've seen many different answers from people for solutions and things like that and one thing that stuck out to me was maybe planting some oak trees because they're slow burning and very drought tolerant and they can protect the hillside from mudslides and things like that so that's just one thing that I have in mind okay thank you Candidates, unfortunately, we have a lot of questions, but no more time. So we will uh, begin our closing statements in just a moment. But we have some good questions. I just want to share with you what's on your constituents' minds. If you wish to address anything, that's up to you. But let me just share some of the questions that were here. One person asked about the swimming pool on the west side, said it was badly needed. There was a question about districts and how you think districts work, and said that uh, Santa Barbara, it's uh, caused some problems up there. Big questions that we had was around housing, the lack of affordable or workforce housing. Uh, did you have solutions there? And uh, questions regarding the labor force in the city as far as if they are paid below average uh, compared to other cities, how would you work together with some of the labor unions? Kevin, there was a question for you about if you'll be resigning from the uh, current position you have. Again, uh, totally up to you if you want to uh, answer that. So we are uh, going to begin our closing statements. We're going to go in the reverse order that we did earlier. Irene, when you're ready, you have one minute. Great. Thank you, everyone, for being here this evening. I've been a 30-year resident of the West Side, and as I mentioned earlier, a founding, a founding member of the West Side Community Council and part of the downtown business district. And so what I will bring are all those skill sets, along with the fact that I've owned my own business, we've raised our family, to be the voice that you hear up at City Hall. Have accountability. Are those Measure O funds being properly spent? Are we getting our fair share on the West Side? Balance. We need balanced growth for both businesses and homes, and yet we still must protect our environment. And 
connecting the west side and downtown, yet we all wear the same shirt. Ventura is strong. We're still a city, and we have to work together for the cohesiveness of our city. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, your closing statement, please. I believe my years of experience make me uniquely qualified to step in on day one. That's what I present. We are in uncharted territory. This is the first time we've gone to districts. We don't have a city manager right now. We are still recovering from the Thomas fire. I think we need a candidate who's connected, who's informed, and who's accessible to all of you to carry forward our priorities. I'm proud of my position as the director of downtown, and I'm going to keep that position. I got a formal legal ruling from the Fair Political Practice Commission that encouraged me to do so. I think it's my connections and my ability to get things done, which is why the timing is right for me to be elected to represent you. I think my reputation and my history of working with people, representing their needs, getting them through City Hall is why I can be effective for you. I'm the only candidate that lives and works every day in District 1. I'm going to be here for you. If you need to call someone, I will be your go-to person. I would be proud to have your vote and your support. Thank you. Thank you. Our next candidate, uh, Marco Cuevas. First, I would like to thank you, the audience, the League of Women Voters, my fellow candidates. This has been a great discussion. Um, I don't, sorry. So I am running, like I said earlier, because I want to find real solutions. I want to find answers to the problems that have been facing our district for years. I don't let the fact that I am younger, probably one of the youngest candidates, if not the youngest candidate running in all the districts. I have always been ambitious in my life. I've never let um, things like my age stop me. I've always had an opinion. I want to bring that opinion to the city council. I want to critically think about our issues, and I would really appreciate your vote to allow me to do that. Thank you. Thank you. And Sophia Rubalcava. Thank you. Uh, so I have been a resident of the West Side for 36 years, and I bring experience because I'm a union steward with my union, and I've been a, the chief union steward on the executive board of my union, so I bring that labor perspective, and I have to deal with conflict every single day, and I have to be a mediator and try to help people solve their conflicts. So that's the type of experience that I can bring, and also, I've been the interpreter for our school board meetings at my job for the past seven years. So I'm really familiar with how boards work and the process and everything that they have to go through. And I do my research because not only do I have to express the information, but I have to do it in another language. So I really have to do my research and all my stuff there. And so I'm interested in connecting all residents because I'm the only bilingual candidate. So I feel that I can connect all residents to city government and also as a female born and raised on the west side, I feel like I can bring that perspective that has been ignored. Thank you. I have a couple of important announcements, but first, how about a round of applause for these candidates?